All right, Winwing sent me a full F16 HOTUS setup to review. Let's get into it. We'll start with the throttle Orion 2 base. When I opened the box, I was really impressed by the packaging. It was very well packaged. Uh, it came with the USB cable, some suction cups, and Allen keys and some hardware. As I was pulling the foam out, you can see it's just really well packaged. They did a good job holding this thing in place, very snug. Once I got it on my desk, this thing was uh, surprisingly light for how big it is. All the buttons and knobs look to be in great condition and they seem to be very high quality. When you flip it around, you'll notice on the bottom there are no friction pads or rubber pads or anything that's gonna keep it in place. So this thing's gonna spin like a top on top of your desk. So it's absolutely imperative that you get some sort of friction pad. Fortunately, Winwing provides suction cups. You'll need to take the nuts off of all the suction cups and separate them. Then you can place them uh, in the four holes on each corner of the bottom of the base and secure them in place with the nuts. Once I got them in place, I put it on my desk and I noticed that unfortunately these suction cups really don't work well. Uh, when you put pressure down on them, the edges just flip up. I was able to get one of them bent down all the way as much as I could, but I still couldn't get any suction on my desk. Now this could be because my desk has a very rough surface and it just can't get a very good seal. But even though they don't really stick very well, uh, they act as a, a fairly good friction pad and so it's not going to spin anymore. I still feel like it needs to be a little bit more secure than this. So for those of you who just have a desk, you might need to either order their mount for this or uh, find another way to mount this to your desk. Next is the throttle grip and rail system. When you open the box, you'll notice again, everything seems very well packaged. The rail is right on top. Underneath, you'll find the corner brackets for the rail stand. Some sticky tack circles and if you don't have any tools it includes the tools and hardware and of course the stand arms underneath that you'll find the actual throttle grip this thing looks great looks just like the real thing it's very heavy for its size, at least in my opinion, and it feels to be really good quality. Feels like a lot of it is metal. I can't tell 100%, but it feels like it's made entirely of metal. To attach this to the base, you just need to split the throttle arms, put the three screws in place, make sure they're flush, align them to the inner throttle arm, and tighten all three screws to put it in place. Once they're tightened, make sure they're flush so that they slide in between the two throttle arms smoothly without any binding. Then align the holes and put the large screw all the way through both throttle arms and the uh, throttle grip until it gets out the other side. You'll have a washer and a lock washer. Put the washer on first on the other side, then the lock washer, and then the nut. Get it finger tight, and then you can use the included tools to tighten them even further. You don't need to get a crazy amount of torque on this, just get it snug, and that'll hold it in place. Align the PS2 male to female, plug it in, and attach it to the base. And since the F16 doesn't need two engines, we're going to attach the remaining cable to the other side. I noticed that after I had installed the cable, it flipped forward of the cable channel and started pinching. In order to prevent this from happening, just grab the cable and pull it all the way to the back of the channel. You'll see the channel there, uh, I highlighted it in red. Um, just pull it to the back and now it shouldn't pinch anymore. Now let's set up the stand. Just unwrap the corner brackets. Leave the screws loose. You'll want to actually probably loosen them a little further so that there's enough gap that the nut will fit inside the groove 
channel of the uh, arms. Slide the channel through, and if it gets bound up, just you might have to loosen the nut just a little bit further, push it, and it should slide right in. Do the base, same thing. Make sure the nuts are really loose, then tighten them in place once you've got it in. Do the same thing for the other side and make sure that they're opposite. Now let's install the rail. Just take the hardware, you're gonna put the screw head on the pilot facing side and the nut on the back side. Keep it loose, enough that it'll fit into the channel. Same thing, slide it in. This was kind of a pain uh, throughout this whole process, getting the nuts uh, loose enough that they'll fit inside the channel of the, the arms and then tightening them in place and now you have your stand. Next, you're gonna to need to attach the stand to the throttle base. And take the washer and screws, same thing. Get the nut on there, but get it really loose, enough that there's enough gap. Same exact procedure. Set up all four. Push them up so that there's enough gap. Slide it into the other channel on the base of the stand. Again, you get stuck. Just loosen that nut. Should slide right in. Once it's in place, you're gonna have to adjust the rail quite a few times until you get it to line up with the roller. Once the rail is resting on the roller properly, tighten everything and you should be good to go. Now, I wasn't able to get the suction cups in place after I got the rail system on because the nuts were way too big to fit inside the channel, so you'd have to get some uh, extra nuts to make that work. Fortunately, Wing Wing provided uh, sticky tack circle dots that I was able to stick on the base. They hold it pretty firmly, but when I removed the throttle from my desk, it left a little residue on my desk. But once it was all in place, I was able to move the throttle up and down, and it didn't see too much movement. Uh, with the sticky circle dots in place. I'm gonna demonstrate the buttons and knobs, press them all for you so you can hear the quality. The sliders actually have a stop in the middle that you can feel when you hit it, which I appreciate. There are two buttons on the bottom of the throttle grip. These do exist, I believe, on the Block 70 grip. I believe it's the blackout switch. They kind of get pressed sometimes, depending on how tightly I grip the, the throttle grip. On the Block 40, this does not exist. So I, I was unfamiliar with it. I, I only crewed the 40. <laughs> Next, you'll use the bracket and uh, screw to get a little bit of cable management here. Then plug the cable directly to your motherboard. This is key. Uh, to updating the firmware of the throttle. If you plug it into the front of the computer or into a hub, you're probably gonna run into some problems. This is something that was reported in the forums, so keep that in mind. Once you have it plugged in, make sure everything looks like it's working, that you're getting response from the throttle in the SimApp Pro software. Once you're happy with it, click on Firmware Update, then click Update F16 T-Grip, click OK, and then click OK again. It's gonna warn you not to have anything else plugged in. Just click OK as long as that's the only thing plugged in. Once the update starts, you should see the light flashing on the throttle base. This means that the update is going through. And once it's finished, you'll hear it disconnect and reconnect. Confirm the version is looking good and then start the calibration. When you start the calibration, push the throttle all the way to max afterburner and back to idle. I do it twice and then click complete. So while I was at the expo, the expo was at Las Vegas, so I went down to Nellis Air Base. I was able to meet up with a buddy of mine. He's a crew chief at Nellis Air Base, and he was able to get me on the flight line. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring 
the wind wing throttle and stick with me onto the flight line, uh, nor was I allowed to take any video or pictures. Uh, public re relations was just not going to let me do that. But uh, I wish I could have because then I could have actually taken video and, and uh, pictures of the actual throttle against the wind wing uh, throttle and the stick. But um, I was able to go and sit in the cockpit, take some notes. It's been a long time, so about 15 years since the last time I touched uh, an F-16 throttle and stick. So I was able to get in there, take some notes, then go back out to the parking lot, pull out the stick and throttle, take some more notes, touch and feel and all that. Uh, and uh, compare it. So I've got to say the throttle on uh, the F the actual F-16 is much larger than this. It's not as small. This is a little smaller. I would say the real F-16's uh, throttle comes out to about here. It's a little, little longer. Uh, the other thing is this right here. On the real F-16, this is about that long. It's significantly longer. You can grab uh, with almost three fingers the, uh, the latch there. Um, but other than, and, and of course the sway, the entire range of motion is significantly larger and longer on the real F-16. But um, as far as the representation that Winwing has done here, in my opinion, great. Uh, the only complaint I have on this throttle really is, is this knob right here. It's not quite the way it is in the real uh, stick on, or in the real throttle. In the real throttle, this comes out to about here and you can just push your finger right here and, and, and move it. But you gotta get real, right up close to this thing and you actually accidentally can move that if you're not paying attention or not being careful. So, but other than that, I mean, this thing is very close to the real deal uh, as far as like movement and how it works and you have to actually unlock this to get it back behind the, the horn. You actually have a horn. I love it, I think it's great. If you're looking for uh, realism, it's where it's like exactly like the real thing, this isn't exactly like the real thing. But if you're looking for something that is as close to the real thing as possible, this is it. I, I really, really like this a lot. Next, the Orion 2 stick base. Same thing, you'll notice same quality of packaging. Inside, you'll find suction cups, Allen keys, and hardware, as well as a USB cable. Pull the base out, remove the plastic, and this thing is entirely made of metal. Again, same level of quality. Next is the stick grip. This thing is heavy, feels like it is fully made out of metal as well, and it includes the shaker kit, I believe that's what they call this, which just adds a couple buttons to the stick. On the bottom of the stick, you'll find the PS2 cable. Just pull that out gently, take the tape off, and remove the cover. You can plug this in just like you would on a computer, and then place the base gently into the knurled receptacle and twist that until it's plenty finger tight. Once you're done with that, set the set screw in place, tighten that down. Now if you're an F-16 heretic, you can add the shaker kit. <laughs> Pull the plug out, you'll see the receptacle. Just plug the shaker kit in place, and then you're gonna need to un uh, remove the two screws on the side on either side of the receptacle. Once they're out, you can put the shaker kit in place. Just tuck the wires inside and stick it in the holes there. Then place the two screws, tighten them, and you have an extra trigger now. Plug in the USB cable. Again, make sure it's in the motherboard. Now before you update the grip, disconnect your throttle. Make sure that that's the only thing plugged in. Click on the stick, click firmware update, click update F16J grip and click OK and OK. Once the update starts, you should see the light flashing on the base of the, the stick. Now mine stopped at 57% and would not progress any further. I reached out to WinWing and they said not to worry about it that you can start the process over by unplugging this, uh, the 
the stick and plugging it back in. I went ahead and downloaded the firmware uh, uh, manually from their website and then uh, used the advanced options to manually update the firmware. Once it's done, I was able to test it. I'm gonna move the stick around and see that it is moving in the SimApp Pro software. Test all the buttons, make sure everything is logging in the left and you can see them. And of course you can test the buzzer. Don't be like me. Make sure you pull all the styrofoam out because there is a base plate at the bottom. Again, high quality machining. Take all four screws Make sure they are tight and flush. Then you can put in the suction cups on each of the corners, tighten them with the included nuts. I did find the same problems that I did on the throttle suction cups, same issue. Again, this could be my desk, but they still work as pretty good friction pads. I'm still getting some movement even with the suction cups because they don't really stick to my desk. Again, could just be my desk. All right, so my notes from the flight line. This is what I've got for the stick. Uh, comparing the wind wing stick to the real F-16 stick. The first thing is the trigger. The trigger is fairly close. It's really close to the real thing. Uh, you've got the two detents. And the first one's really clicky, you can hear that. And the second one's a little bit more of a thump feeling, which was a lot like the real trigger, but I felt that the real trigger, <clears throat> that second detent had a little bit more of a click and the feel of the plastic in the real, the real thing was uh, a lot harder plastic. It's uh, more, uh, not metallic, but just a tougher plastic. Um, but as far as like, the look and feel and operation, this is very similar to the real deal. Uh, the pickle button gives on the wind wing stick a little bit more than the real pickle button. Um, by that I mean it's a little easier to press on the, on the wind wing sticks uh, than it is on the real stick. The real stick has a little bit more resistance on the pickle button and it doesn't move around like that as much. The trim hat, the trim hat floats. You can see it kind of floats around and then you can push it all the way to the side and click, but it's not just directional, it actually floats around and that's the way it is in the, uh, on the real stick. The pinky button is very accurate, look and feel down here, but the uh, pinky switch doesn't feel the same. This feels really uh, loose. The real one had, it was more, felt more mechanical and it had a really audible and um, tangible click. You could actually feel the click. You can kind of hear it, but in the real one, it was it was very audible. Um, so again, I'm splitting hairs here with these uh, critiques, uh, comparing it to the real stick because that's how good of a replica this is, in my personal opinion. I, I think it's great. Uh, I think it's a great uh, replica of the F the real F-16 stick. Obviously, minus the the shaker, but uh, even the movement. I'm going to hold the base down a little bit here. Um, this is accurate to the real stick. There is a little bit of play at the center, and I think you can adjust that. Um, I'd have to open it up and, and, and play around with it, um, but at, out of the box, this, is, this feels pretty good. Um, that's what you're gonna get in the real F-16, fly-by-wire system. It's not gonna move much. I think you get about a quarter, eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch movement, so. But yeah, I'm really impressed with it. I really like this. This is. Uh, that's a really good replica of the real flight stick. So in my personal opinion, the Wing Wing F-16 HOTUS setup is a high quality product. I, I really enjoyed it. I think it's great. Uh, the entire thing is made of metal. Some of the buttons are made of plastic, but the majority of the products are made entirely of metal. High quality machining, uh, in my opinion. However, if you're looking for an exact replica of the real F-16 throttle and stick, Unfortunately, it's not exactly the same, but it is as close, in my opinion, it is as close as you're gonna get to a one-to-one -one exact replica of the F-16 throttle and stick. Now, there are obviously other HOTUS systems out there that are significantly cheaper, but they're not gonna have this kind of quality. So if you're looking for a high quality HOTUS setup, especially for the F-16, in my personal opinion, I think it's great and I definitely recommend it. All right, see ya.